Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from New York City and WCS America. You're watching the final of best of seven between Hero and Revival. Game two is about to commence. Revival is currently up one to zero. The big question is how much will that first game phase Hero? You talked about the start. You know, he's one of those guys who things start not going his way. A yeah. very emotional player. Uh, it's a very tough to, to come in our first game, be caught off guard as he's moving across the middle of the map, taken out. He's going to have to rethink his plan, and Aklon Waste is a great map to do that, a very yep. macro-focused map. He can say, you know what, that first game I tried the timing, it didn't work out, let's just go to the three base play on Aklon Waste. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number two of WCS America, the final. Again, the winner takes home $20,000, second place gets $12,000 but an $8,000 difference and a 500 point difference in WCS points. Here we are in the top left hand location. I present your red Protoss player looking absolutely dominant, not only in pro league, but throughout the regular season of WCS America, undefeated through the round of 32 and the round of 16. Finds himself down 0-1 in this best of seven, but plenty of room to work with. He is Hero. His opponent in the bottom right hand location representing Team Evil Geniuses. This is his first ZVP in WCS America. He has a 100% win rate against Protoss right now in WCS America. He is your Blue Zerg player, Revival. How's that for a stat? That's a good 1 0. Yeah. <laughs> so far against Protoss, of course, the 1 0 is the first map of this series that he won by. Very solidly defending that two base immortal push, catching it off guard before it could even build up the steam it needed to plow through his third base. So calm, so cool, so collected, just chilling with those lings and roaches out in the middle of the map, knowing this push is coming, knowing if Hero nails his force fields and it's on top of it, it's not going to do much. But swarming in there like the true Zerg he is and disrupting the progress of a push where every single second, every single force field is ridiculously important. And once again, Hero. A Revival just saying, you know what? We're not having a little dance at the National. We're not doing that, Mr. Probe. I'm just going to go take my third, uncontested. And this is a move that uh, we said some Zergs don't like to do as much in Heart of the Swarm because gateway expansions are so prevalent. But we've seen both last game and this game, Hero saying, you know what? I don't care if other Protosses, you know, like to gateway expand. We saw Alicia do, the, do that quite a bit, for example. He says, no, I like the Forge and the Fast Nexus. I really like Probes. They're good for harassing drones. This probe really wants to dance, man. That's all he wants. He's yeah. misunderstood. The, yeah, the drones just don't understand They're that part of the probe it. dance involves shooting a particle beam at the drones every once in a while. The lings want to dance. Yeah. Uh, probe, no. He, he doesn't He doesn't like Zergings as a dancing partner. <laughs> He's like, no. No, get away. <laughs> Never get away. mind. I changed my mind. <laughs> no dancing. <laughs> He's running away. He should make it back home. Yeah. Well, one link trying to overtake him. Well... So uh, one trick there is uh, the Zerg mean is actually slightly faster than the probe. Mm -hmm. Of course, what happens if you're running in a straight line, the Zerg gets close to shoot the probe and it Slows stops for a millisecond to yeah. rear its claws and then it misses the attack. So often you can manually control them to run in front of the probe. And of course, that way, that's why the Protoss player wants to really make sure when the probe is retreating, it's being right clicked onto a mineral patch. So when the Zerg tries to cut it off, it goes right through the Zerg. Yep. It'll take one or two claw heads, but that's better than being passed and taking four or five and potentially dying. Both these players playing very safe, economic builds so far into this game. Again, here going for that Forge Expand Revival, taking three early hatcheries, or I guess I should say two additional early hatcheries, not taking a gas just yet. So again, Akalon Waste, again, it, it, we talked about a little bit before. If you've been watching this tournament, you, you pretty much know how this map generally plays out. There's three fairly easy bases that you can take, especially from the Protoss point of view, because normally Zerk player is going to take those bases anyway. Um, but a lot of Protoss players love getting a, a you know a faster third because it's actually doable. You know, there's a, there's a narrow channel leading to that location, and then making fun stuff happen from there. One thing I'm really curious is you talk about how revival so far. I've only seen the single ZVP and that was last map. Yep. I'm really interested to see how he's going to play a mid game situation. Of course, last game, Zerg being off in a reactionary race, his play was entirely based upon the fact that Hero went for that two base immortal push. So, uh, if Hero does a more passive build. The ball is going to be in Revival's core as far as does he want to go Mutas, does he want to go Roach Hydra Pressure, does he want to go straight to Hive like we saw Snoot did. There's so many options, and if a Protoss takes a third base, 
Zerg can kind of do whatever they want for the first few minutes, or, you know, uh, for the first few minutes after that third base is started by the Protoss. Looks like that's what uh, Hero's setting up for here. Again, taking down these rocks, and once you take down these rocks, they kind of collapse, so there's no entry into that third base location unless your opponent re-kills the rocks that end up collapsing. Um, and, and Hero has that pro behind it, so it looks like he is intending to take that third base, but we'll keep an eye on that for sure because it's been known for players to just not do that. But there we see the Nexus going down, so here going for a very fast third. And as you said, it's going to be up to Revival. Will Revival try to abuse this anyway? And that's that's not an easy thing to do anyway. Uh, again, we talked about this on this map. Revival getting Zerging speed into Roach Warren before going Lair. And that's a reaction to the fact that he hasn't seen uh, all four gases taken incredibly fast by his opponent like he did last game. And so he's worried there could be early pressure involved. Or maybe he just wants to put on some early pressure against his opponent's third base. Twilight Council on the way, it's going to enable Hero to, to go up to plus two. Now adding a lot of gateways on the map, three in total. Let's see how many more he adds. Re Revival is still only on 44, 40, 46 drones. A very low drone count, making nine roaches. What is he up to? Oh, this, the Mothership Core is going to be instrumental. Uh, 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 Speed is about to finish. He's going to lose the two stalkers unless he recalls. This is a very tough choice because if he uses recall, he won't have the energy back to defend. And Revival is going to... He's losing one Stalker, he might lose another Recall, oh. and now he's not going to have Photon Overcharge. And you know what, I mean, he only saved like a, a one Stalker, and his Stalker got very hurt as well. Uh, of course, this would have been fine if the game was passive and the most of core would have plenty of time to recharge its energy, but right. unfortunately, it's not a passive game. Revival is putting on some serious pressure. So many roaches are crossing the map, and and Hero, without the Mothership Core, it's going to come down to having perfect force fields and great Blink Soccer control if he can even get... Oh! Oh, Link wait. sneaking inside. The sentries are attacking the rocks. No force shield going down. This could not be good for Hero. The Link sprinting into the main base, going after the economy. And that's not even... That's just the beginning of this push. A bunch of roaches storming to the front door. Hero caught completely off guard, charging up into his opponent's natural expansion. And Hero has to work on uh, its crisis management mode right now. Oh, this is such a rough spot. He's cleared up the, the main, but there's so much pouring into his natural. This is an absolute disaster for Hero. The pylons are being focused on. The Psychor goes down. That means he can't warp in sentries or stalkers. Gosh, two more gateways on the way. Hero desperately trying to get units out, but he's supply block 71 over 70, losing more probes than his natural expansion. Looks like he fended off the units in his main base, but Revival still sending nothing but lings across the map, adding 11 drones in production. Realize how much damage he's doing. Wants to have a backup plan, but more Lings and Roaches spewing into the main base, tracking down these Stalkers, and Heroes in so much trouble down 115 to 47 supply. There's the GG Revival taking a quick game, too. He's up 2 0 against Hero. What a finely crafted build there. Caught Hero totally off guard. A really uh, evil genius type of build there, catching his opponent when he wasn't ready. Very similar to the style he used to take out his teammate alive in the semifinals. Wow, Revival going up two games. Fairly short games, too. It seemed like Hero in game one going for a very aggressive strategy. Revival making all the right reads, having those units in place, winning with the Ling Roaches, it seems. In game number two, deciding, you know what, I'm going to be the one to be aggressive since you're being crazy greedy, taking advantage of the fact that Protoss is love to take this faster. And once those Lings run by, that's one of the worst feelings as a Protoss player. And at that point, Hero didn't even know about the Roaches. He didn't, you know, he didn't necessarily know that that was coming as well. And again, he had no response. Too many roaches just swarmed into his natural. Very heads up play by Revival, constantly producing behind attack. You know, he immediately focused pylons and a psychor. Yes. The two most important things to take down is that if you're ever dealing with Protoss, you want to kill everything but the gateways. Because if you kill the pylons and a psychor, the gateways can't really do anything anyway. Really prioritizing uh, exactly with the focus, security experience with those early game attacks. All right, guys, you're watching the WCS America Finals. It's Hero versus Revival. Revival is up two to zero. Hero has some work to do. Guys, stay tuned. Game three coming up.